Hello guys, uh, I'm Paul Wessel. I'm going to be your guide through the animation section today. And before we get into making animation, we'll talk about what we try to achieve in this section and also an overview of the movie capabilities in GMT and some of the modules that are involved. Okay, so um, we have a GitHub page for this whole workshop and has subdirectories for the various sessions. Uh, here is the seven animation section. Um, it has a readme file with some instructions and some resource pointers and you know some tasks of what we're going to try to achieve here with learning the module modules, the movie and events. And then uh, you can read this for yourself. There's not that much uh, high brow here. Uh, the biggest thing here is to you know don't go for too much too early. Try to make small short movies until they work and then you can expand size and dimensions and all that stuff. Uh, the web page, uh, this, the GitHub page, has all the products that they're going to make, but don't look at them. Uh, if you just look at them and copy and paste, then you're not learning anything. Not that we care what you do, but if you want to learn something, you need to type it. So please follow along as I type things uh, in real time here. Okay, so GMT animations basically animations for the masses, I say. If you're able to make a GMT plot, there's no reason why you can't make animations. It's way too late already in, in science that we don't make animation routinely into our journals. You can also visit our YouTube channel for additional movie examples and also talks about GMT and animations that I've given over meetings and so on. All right, so we make animations in GMT with movie and events. Uh, basically, anyone knows the movie is basically a whole bunch of illustrations that are put together in the right format in the right order and played back at a certain rate, say 24 images per second. Um, in that process, the two time axes, you have your playback time, which is you know 24 per second or 12 per second, whatever. And then you have the animation time, which is what the time of the frames are. Uh, representing, and that could be millions of years or seconds. Um, but by putting them together and playing back, we, we convert animation time to real time. Uh, when we make pl plots for movies, basically you have to think in terms of the paper size that you are given. We call that the canvas. So you can make any canvas you want. If you want to make a one by one and a half meter movie, good luck playing that anywhere, you can, um, but it makes more sense to use some of the standard format like HD and 4K and 720p and so on. Those are 16 by 9 formats. So I'm just going to focus on that today. Um, for composing your plot, you must imagine you have a 24 by 13 and a half centimeter paper because that's what's going to fit uh, on the screen. And uh, you do the usual thing about positioning yourself around that piece of paper, minus X, minus Y. And uh, it's pretty simple. I'll look at uh, this. Um, time for some famous quotes related to repetition. Good old Einstein said that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. A less smart person, Paul Wessel, said that GMT animation is doing the same thing over and over again and getting different results. Wait a minute. Well, oh, you have to use variables. So that's the difference here between the two that you have to change things between. So you're not doing the same thing. Well, you're kind of doing the same thing, but a little bit different. <coughs> the movie uh, eliminates the explicit loop over time by taking care of that aspect. So it basically takes your main frame script. We'll see how that looks like. Uh, and it, and it auto runs it for all the times in the frames and making one image per frame time. And it's doing that in parallel, so it goes pretty fast. Um, there are a couple of special variables whose value will change in frame number. We'll see that. Uh, if you have something very static, like a constant background image or a constant foreground image logo or something, you can have a script that just builds that constant image, and it will get inserted uh, in all the frames for the movie. Or well, these could actually be, instead of scripts, could be PostScript plots themselves. 
and movie takes care of everything else. There's a few special movie shell variables. These are constants, all right? Don't change with frame number or anything like that. So that's basically things that might be useful, like the width and height of the canvas. We might compute some offsets and things based on those uh, number of frames, perhaps. I haven't used the other ones in a script, but I guess some people can do that. Uh, all right, so then we have a special movie shell variables that are updated for each frame. And that's where the action uh, gets interesting. So uh, let's just do an example. Let's pretend that the 48th line in a data file, uh, which will be the 48th frame, is like this in red here. Some longitude, latitude, some other two values, and then some text, trailing text. OK, what happens is when the uh, G movie runs the frame script for the 48th, the 47th, that I have to start at zero, 47th uh, frame, all the variables on the left here are set automatically for you. So the frame number is incremented, of course. There are a few other things that you probably don't need, but there are names and tags and images. And then we have the more interesting movie column, which um, means your data set, basically. So the records up here, the record up here, for each column here, they get stuck into a movie column zero, movie column one, movie column two. So for instance, for K3, movie column three, uh, that value, that variable is set to minus 3,500. Movie text is the whole training text and movie word, zero, word one, word two, are the training text split into words if you need that. So we're going to make uh, a movie of Earth spinning using an orthographic projection. It's going to be a very lame a movie, very simple, but we got to start somewhere. So we're just going to do 90 degrees of the Earth rotating, and, and we'll choose a small format like 360p uh, so it goes faster. And then we'll do some variations on the theme and expose more movie options. Uh, bin bash. Shebang. Okay, so we're gonna make a simple plot of the Earth from, I guess, from space, uh, not moving anything, just a map. Okay, GMT, begin. I'm gonna call it one map. I'm gonna make a PNG. Okay, and this is gonna just simply be a GMT coast plot for the world. And it's gonna have an orthographic projection from 30 west. And 30 north, 12 centimeter wide. Um, color is going to, for land, going to be burly wood. Beautiful color. And for ocean, going to be tomato. Actually. Minus BG to draw some grid lines. And uh, that's it. MT end. So unless I have one of my typical typos in here. Uh, this should run. So I'm going to save it. Save as one map. Okay. And then we can do bash one map. Okay. Did we get a map? Yeah, we got a map. All right. Beautiful. I like those colors. If you don't like the colors, you can change them. These are the colors I selected. Beautiful. Okay. But that's not a movie, right? That's just uh, a simple plot. But you can imagine making this plot for different longitudes. We have a bunch of pictures and then play them back one after the other and it will show motion of the Earth, rotation. All right. Uh, how do we do that? Well. We start by saving this file, a new file, I'm going to call it to Earth. And for this is going to be the main script that the movie is going to operate on. So it doesn't have a file name because it's going to be many file names. And it knows it's going to be PNG, so we don't need to save that. So we're going to do this. Uh, one thing that's different uh, here is that in, in a movie, we, as I mentioned, we have a, have, we have a canvas. 
So we have to think about where you want to put this earth on the canvas now. We didn't have to do that in just plain modern old plot because it crops it. So now we need to place it in the center. All right. That's going to be the changes I'm going to make to the, the plot. But uh, I can't run this because it's going to keep the 30 degree west uh, look, uh, look view. So we need to change this to variables. Well, we just talked about these variables. Movie frame. It's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So when the movie runs, it's going to create all those frames for us. Down here, I'm going to write in some comments, test that it works. That's important. We're going to run a command here, and I'm going to put it in comp in the comments because we are going to run this script. We're going to run the GMT movie command. GMT movie it looks something like this. GMT movie, name of the script, to earth.sh. Um, you have to select the canvas. I said we're going to do something small like 30, 360p <clears throat> on the 91 frames. But let's just, <laughs> excuse me, I'll, I'll put the 55th frame at the PDF. And we're going to call this whole project to Earth. Right. So it's convenient to put the GMT movie command in with the script as a comment so that as you make changes here, all you need to do is to you know, save and then copy the movie command. And this should now look at the 91 longitude that only picked the 55th and make a plot of that. And we'll see if we got that. Yeah. Looks like uh, center here is, this is 90. So it's going to be 60, so that's sort of 55. So that worked. So now we have, we know that the script works in a, for whatever variables I've put in. Okay, that's good. So now we can do a bit more. We can uh, say to run it and build a mp4 movie okay how do we do that well as a lazy type this i can copy and paste the previous command since it's didn't read the same file same thing here uh, but we're not going to ask for the 55th frame anymore now we're going to ask for mp4 output and i want some sort of indication of which frame we're looking at. So I'm going to do the automatic labeling of frame numbers. Uh, this is built in, so you don't have to actually do anything. And then because we make all these frames, basically, in the subdirectory to Earth, at the end, if you want to run it again, GMT is stubborn about not letting you if that directory exists. You can um, bypass that with the minus Z, which will zap that directory. And I'm going to do that here so we don't have to run into that. But that's what that means. OK. OK, how about this one then? That can work. Takes longer now. Oops. And it finished. At the end there, you will see it spits out the ffmpeg command that was used to actually assemble all the PNGs into one. MP4 movie. This is useful because sometimes you want to do something slightly different or run this again. You just copy and paste that. Fine. Okay, so now we have an Earth MP4. Oh, there it is. Does it work? Yeah. Yeah, it worked fine. 90. Uh, does it spin the right way? No. It should spin the other way. But that's going to take a little bit more effort, not just going from frame zero to 90, obviously. We want to go backwards. So that's, I'll do that and get that right. But uh, let's continue with this example. We're going to make uh, animated GIF. 
All right. Copy paste again. Instead of left hand peg, we're going to do GIF. And we'll, this time we'll add also a progress indicator. And that's a glyph a graph that changes, uh, that shows progress. And it's all, it's a built in thing in GMT movie. It has like nine different, no, sorry, six different progress indicators that you can choose. And you can add as many as you want almost, and as many labels as you want. They can be here, like frame time, frame number, you can be lapse time, uh, static text, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so we're gonna run this guy. All right, uh, there is a GIF produced up here. And you can see it plays, and you can see the progress far up in the corner there. I don't know how to get it to play again, but you don't have to. Make it a minute smaller. Okay, so that's the GIF. And we successfully made a movie, a simple one obviously, but uh, good enough for government work. So we need to talk a little bit about point sources of the events here. You can plot symbols in a movie using plot, but they will all appear on all frames. So that's not useful usually, unless you want to plot cities or something that will be there. So if they represent events, the symbol should only stay visible for a finite time interval. And that's very hard to do with plot without a lot of scripting. So the solution is to use the GMT module events instead of plot. Uh, events requires a time column in the data so that it can plot things when it should be plotted and not plot when it's outside the range, the life of the event. Uh, we can plot all those usual ge geographic, sorry, ge geometric symbols. Uh, we can also plot, uh, you know, focal mechanisms from Mecca and Coop and Ge geodesy vectors from Melo. So it's very advanced. All right, so how does it work? Well, let's focus on the green line here first. So every event in your data file, at different times presumably, get this green line attached to it so that um, you basically have an infinite number of line curves that are hidden that controls the size and the appearance of the symbol. So for instance, here, think of this as the symbol size. Before the symbol or the event happens, the symbol size should be zero, right? So that's why it's zero. Then when TB comes, the beginning of, of the event, we jump up to one because now we should see the symbol and it stays there until the end of the event and it jumps down to zero again. That's the default. And that's fine for many applications. But if you want to be fancy, you can tinker with these, this green curve and make it a little bit more uh, wiggly like we've done here. So you can have a little rise time before the event. You can change the symbol size by quite a bit, well, by anything. Uh, when the symbol first happens, and then they can decay down to the normal size. And then when it ends, we can, instead of going away, you can just fade back to a smaller size, for instance. Uh, the cool thing is that these curves um, there are actually four of them, one for the size, but similar curves exist for color intensity, transparency, and also a new one that adjusts the, the data value that are used to color the symbols. So if you have Z values that uses the color table to look up the, the actual color, you can fiddle with those Z values so that you get different colors for the same events over time. We're not going to do that one today, but we're going to do the color intensity and transparency. All right, so we can look at the seismicity for 2018. I'm going to call it Pacific because we're going to focus on that area, but of course, it's a global farm. Uh, we only got, uh, using that get quake script, we only got seismicity for 2018, minus six, five and higher. And for each frame, which will give us a central longitude. We'll build this plot. We're going to uh, plot the background coast, and then we're going to plot events on top. 
you know, when all goes well, you could consider throwing away the PS Coast plot and stick in a GRD image background instead to make it fancy. Okay, we did this already, I think. Get the quakes from the USGS and uh, run, basically run the script to get those quakes for you. Um, before I stop this presentation, just mention that in 6.5, GPT 6.5, which will get out this summer, we hope, there's a new option in movie that allows for adding soundtracks. So if you have music or narration you want to include, that's coming. And if the minus A option, which takes the audio file, has a modifier plus E, which will stretch the audio track so it matches the length of the animation track. Because that only makes sense if they're not too different. But if you want to be perfect, the ending there, you can use that option. Okay, so now we're going to move into a movie making that uses actual data. And we selected uh, seismicity from USGS. Uh, so we need to get the data and to simplify things during this workshop, I've written a script that will do this for us. So basically, uh, USGS has a query server where you can send a command. We send it with curl under the hood from convert. The GMT can open URLs, right? So this is the URL, but it's a special one that has a query dot CSV at the end. Uh, we just simply have to put together the arguments that the query expects, which is time window and magnitude and sort order and so on. It could also be more, it can be things like the region. So we create a URL that has all this stuff in it. Um, then we call Jim to convert on that file, which will do the query and return the results. And then we say we want to reformat the file because having time in the first column is not helpful since we want launch latitude. So we use minus i to change the order of things and skip a whole bunch of columns we don't care about. And then we scale the magnitude by 50 to get um, symbol size in kilometers. We can use those for plotting. And we use minus lowercase h i to skip the first line, which is a common header record, but it's not a GMT header record, so it's not recognized as that. All right, so that's done. And then we create a color table, red, green, blue, for different depths. And then the plan is to make um, a timetable, basically, for the every day of 2018. For every day of 2018, we create a, a longitude by normalizing the days to 0, 1, and just multiply them by 40. So now we have 0, 40. And we add 200. So now we have 200 and 240. And then we do a negative of that. So we get the right direction. Okay. And that's the files that are created. So we should all run this script. We get. And that's it. So let's look at first the results with the query. Oh, I, yeah, a query should be in there. There we go. That's what the query looks like. Uh, so we can see the first line here is the sort of header, but it doesn't actually have a leading sharpie. Um, so time long, lat long, whole bunch of things, names, whatever. Uh, that is then converted to this shorter file, which has long, lat, depth, symbol size, time. We have a CPT that will convert depth to color for us. And then we have the times that we selected every day of 2018, of course. And it will have the, the longitudes for each of those points. OK, so that's what we're going to do. I'll close that, and I close that, and I close that. Okay, so now uh, we're going to make a seismicity movie. Okay, so now we can start making the seismicity movie. Uh, since there are some similarities with the previous movie, I'm going to start with that and save that to three quakes. Uh, sh and uh, just to avoid confusion, we're going to delete all those 
specific commands. Okay, so we have the uh, previous movie script material, uh, but this time you know we're not going to do frame as longitude. We're going to have that data file, so we have to change that, and that means we got to put in call one, so the second column is the one that has the longitudes, and uh, that looks good. And then now we're going to plot the events, GMT events. Uh, the data with all the quakes are called three quakes, quakes spell text, spell that right. And uh, we are making these plots for different times, different days, basically. But we know we have a two day rise and a six day decay. So the symbol is going to be, each symbol can be plotted over many, many days. So this is what events has to figure out by being given the current time. And that, of course, is movie called zero, which is the current time. We're going to plot the symbols as ellipses on the sphere, so they look like they will change as they go around. And then there will be a bunch of uh, events options that you will have to read more detailed. I don't have time to go in, in specifics, but minus ES sets some of these. It changes the curve, the green curve, into the black curve by saying, I want a two-day rise time, and I want a six-day delay. Now we have some more options to events that sets the, the, the magnitude of the controlling curves for size, intensity, and transparency. So we're going to start with minus M S5 plus C0.5. This will scale the symbol by five when it first comes online. And then at the coda, it will shrink to 0.5 itself. The intensity of color, start with one, and then go down to minus 0.6, meaning a darker color once we're in the coda. And then transparency, just take default and plus zero for the coda. Okay, the time unit equals D because the plus R2 and plus V6 has to be in some unit, and we want them to be days so it can be recognized when these things happen. Okay, so I think we got all that stuff done correctly. So now we're going to do make sure it works, meaning this is going to do the error problems. So here we're going to do. Um, GMT movie. I gotta have a comma here. Uh, sorry, comments. GMT movie three quakes. Uh, sh at three hundred and sixty p. Do that. The times, the frames, the times gonna come from the time spans. We're gonna not make a movie. Just gonna get the fiftieth frame as PDF, and it's still called N. Quakes, uh, make a label, but this time use the contents of column zero. Do that, uh, which is going to be time. And normally that will set the timestamp as you know date and uh, hour minute seconds. I don't want the hour minute seconds because they're all going to be zero zero. So I'm going to say format lock map equals minus. I will knock off the hour from the date clock string. Okay. So I think this should be okay here. Let's see. Anything suspicious? No, I don't think so. All right, let's run this puppy. Hence. Oh, we forgot. We forgot the color table. Oh, I forgot. Minus C3 colors dot 
CPT. Right? Otherwise, there's no color lookup. All not found colors. Wasn't it colors? Clicks that CPT. Okay, I gotta wake up here. Clicks that CPT. All right, better work the time. Yes, okay. So now we have uh, D5 with the, the symbols at that time. And I don't like the that ugly tomato color. Whose idea was that? So I'll we'll, we'll change that to something else like gray or something. Makes more sense. Okay. Second effort here to make MP4. Okay mostly the same command, except minus M, which selects the master frame. We're going to instead have F, MP4, MP4. And uh, we can now throw in a progress bar or its indicator, I should say, PP, maybe. All right, so let's try. And that's going to make subdirectory with all these PNG, so I'm going to zap that afterwards. This is to me, I don't need those PNGs. Take a little bit of time, not too long though. The various video computer, obviously, it's all CPU and cores that are used here. 365. Maps that have been made. There we go. Okay. Three weeks. Oh, yeah. There are spins around. We get to see what happens in the Pacific. A lot of quakes in Hawaii during summer. And we have the dates on the top left as the auto label. And then we have the progress indicator on the top right. You can place these anything you want, just like a justification situation. All right, that was good. And the final thing to do is we're just going to test that the, the GIF, I mean, the GIF ports. And that's only changing the MP4 to GIF. And uh, let's change progress bar here to see products indicator to see. All right, and we can run this. Chug, chug, chug. It's working on it. You can see why I don't do HD for workshops because it takes too long. But it looks prettier. Okay, there we have the GIF. A different progress bar. You can see at the output here at the end wasn't FFM it was GM for graphic magic, which does the conversion of the images into a GIF. This is not technically a movie, technically a movie. Okay, so that's where we end up. Um, thanks for paying, playing along. Uh, if you want to make a movie for your project, you know, use some of the ideas here. Come, come up with some different ways of doing things. So, surprises. Take care.